Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon. Let's have some fun. That evening, we all waited for Dad to come home. Sue spotted him through the living room blinds. I see him. I see Daddy. We all ran to the window to watch him walk up the long gravel driveway. Dad was sure strong. I could tell by the way he carried one bulging bag on his shoulder and another big duffel bag swaying in his hand like it was a newspaper. Mom and Dad were always kidding me about how little I was and how big my father was. We knew in the one bag there was something for each of them. Of course, we wanted to see our father, but were also dying to see what he brought them. Hi, hun, Dad said, giving Mom a kiss. Not a romantic, mushy kiss, but a peck on the lips. They were never kissy face to each other, at least not in front of us. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Dad. Hi, Pop. Dad leaned over and the girls hugged and kissed him, and he patted them on the head. My, my, don't my girls look beautiful? More beautiful every time I come home, he said, as he always did. And how's my boy? Fine, I answered. Then he grabbed my sisters, smothering them in his big arms, telling them how much he missed them. A minute later, Dad put his arms around my shoulder, pulled me to his side like I was a rag doll, and asked again how I'd been. We anxiously crowded around as Dad opened his big bag and passed out gifts. I got a wallet with fancy stitching around the edges and an embossed picture of a deer on the front. Deb got a set of hair accessories, clips, and bands, and Sue got fancy smelling soaps and bubble bath stuff. Dad never disappointed us. I often wondered where a truck driver picks up gifts like that. I was really happy to see Dad, but also kind of sad. Sad because I knew that in a few days, he'd be leaving on another haul, be gone for a week, come home for a few days, and then leave again. For you, dear, Dad said, handing Mom a package. I'll wait until later to open it when the kids are in bed. Dad told us a little about his trip, that it was real pretty out west, and that he saw a bad accident. He was explaining the twisted cars until Mom started talking about how dangerous his job was. Soon, they were kind of raising their voices. Up to bed, all of you, Mom said. Thank you, Daddy. Thanks, Daddy. Thanks, Pop, I said, and hurried up to my room to put some money in my wallet. Right away, Mom and Dad started talking loud. Nothing unusual about that, but this was worse than most times. I tiptoed out of my room and to the top of the stairway. A minute later, Susan was beside me. Debbie could sleep through a bomb. We huddled close together, straining our necks to hear what they were saying. We didn't dare peek around the corner and down the stairs. I whispered to my sister, what's dad yelling about? Shush, listen, she whispered back. Dad's voice carried up the stairs. I don't believe it. This is just a trick to get me to quit the long halls. Trick, trick. This is certainly no trick. Mom nearly cried out the words. I'm telling you again, I caught your son in his sister's underwear. He needs you home more. Susan looked at me, her mouth wide open, but I was too scared to be embarrassed. And he had hair rollers in his hair. Sis looked to me with her mouth open like she'd seen a ghost. Well, there's nothing so terrible with that, Dad protested. You didn't find him in bed with a boyfriend, did you? Now that would be serious. And he told me he wants to have his hair curled like his sister's. He so fix his hair. It's got to look better than it does now. Don't you see, John? Mom said in a voice that was cracking with emotion. He wants to be a girl. Dad could barely speak. I, I don't believe you. I just don't believe you. It's not true, not my boy. Mom and dad went on this way for a while. Dad would raise his voice, then mom would do the same. Ache <sighs> him up, I want to talk to him, dad demanded, slurring his words. I guess he had a little too much beer. I gotta talk to my boy about this. Please, dear, wait until tomorrow until you've cooled off, my mother begged. Damn it now, I gotta talk to my son now. I won't hit him, I promise. There was a pause. Sue and I hurried to our rooms. I dove into bed, pulling the covers over me, waiting, praying for the silence to continue. Thump, thump, thump. I could hear my heart pounding in my ear, pounding like an Indian tom-tom. For a minute, I thought it was all a dream, and that I'd just wakened from a bad dream. Click. 
the light went on. I felt a weight on the edge of my bed. Danny, wake up! Mom was shaking my shoulder. I just lay in bed, quivering inside and out. Danny, get up, please, Dan! I heard my father's faint call. Get that boy up! I want to talk with him! I turned over to look into my mom's eyes, eyes that looked like they were floating in tears. Danny, come on downstairs, Mom said. Your father wants to talk with you. He won't hit you. He just wants to talk. I struggled out of bed and in just the bottoms of my PJs, followed my mother downstairs. Danny, my father said with stretched lips as if he was about to burst, your mother says you like to wear your sister's underwear. Is that true? I instinctively looked up at Mom. I didn't know how to answer the question, but I nodded a yes and lowered my head to stare at the carpet. And that you wanted to be like your sisters, want to be a girl? I again glanced at mom. Did I say that? I didn't remember. Don't look at you, mother, dad shouted. She's not answering the question. I am. I hesitated. Well, uh, kinda. Without thinking, I again looked at mom. I knew it. I knew it. Dad raised his voice so much that I jumped backwards. Your mother put you up to this, didn't she? I didn't know what he meant. Put me up to what? I asked myself. All right, son. Dad sounded exhausted. Go back to bed. Sor, sor, ah, go to bed. Without lifting my eyes, I hurried upstairs. At the top of the stairs, I collapsed next to my sister. We hugged the wall like frightened children waiting for more bombs to drop. Now my parents were talking normally, louder that normal, but not bad. I was only able to pick up some of what they were saying, mostly what dad was saying. I'm not convinced, not at all, hmm, if it was true. Let him, I insist. John, John, you meant it. You really mean it. I looked at my sister and she grinned at me. At least that broke the tension. Looks like I'll have a new sister for a while, she said, smiling at me. That night as Elle lay in bed, a million thoughts raced around my mind. I felt mom let me down, but I couldn't be mad at her, not after all she'd been through. And anyway, maybe she didn't understand me when we were talking. Did I really say I wanted to be a girl? Or was it just a fantasy? Something that I didn't want to happen except in my dreams? Or maybe I didn't really know for sure. Over and over, those questions filled my head. The next morning, I stayed in bed long after I usually get up. Didn't even go downstairs for breakfast. Get up, sleepyhead. We've got lots to do, Mom keep calling to me through the door. I'm up, Mom, come on in. I was in my jeans and putting on my shirt when Mom walked in. Your father and I had a talk last night, and he said it was all right for you to be a girl. Man, was I startled? At first, I didn't believe my ears. Come on, Daniel. I've got to get you looking like a girl before your father gets home this afternoon. I know we're going to have fun doing this, don't you? What, me be a girl? What in the... I asked, wrinkling my eyebrows and squiggling up my face. It's one thing to pretend to be a girl for an hour or so, but to be a girl for, like, for a day. Jeez, I don't know about that. Yes, Danielle. I looked at Mom, not knowing what she meant. That's your new name, Danielle, and I'm counting on you to be as girl-like as possible. Please do this for me, son. It's best for all of us. Huh, I wasn't sure what Mom was talking about. I followed mom into the kitchen. First step is washing your hair. A pretty girl has got to have pretty hair. This is just how I used to wash your sister's hair before they got too old for their mother's help. Mom adjusted the water, running it over her hand. I took off my shirt as instructed and bent over the stainless steel bowl, gripping the edge to steady myself. From the hand sprayer, a shower of warm water poured over my head, saturated my hair, and ran along my neck. Mom then lathered the shampoo, working it into my hair, from the hairline to the ends until scrunching sounds filled my ears. Gosh, almighty. Mom's fingers felt great as they massaged scalp, even if it did feel a little creepy. With that, Mom rinsed and shampooed again and rinsed. Mom put more stuff on my hair and wound my hair on top of my head. We'll leave this conditioner on for five minutes and then rinse it off. Next came a rinse with warm water. I shivered as mom turned on the cold water and a cold spray ran down my face. By the time we were finished, I felt like I'd been swimming for an hour, but I still really liked having my hair washed. Mom patted and fluffed my wet hair, 
Then I did the same thing. With a towel around my head, turban-like, I followed her to the little table in front of the back porch window. Hair supplies were spread on the table, and I think my heart skipped a beat. Mom placed a little towel around my neck and spread an old white sheet over me, which she pinned in back. At first, I was afraid. You're not going to give me a short haircut? No, I'm just going to shape your hair. I wouldn't dream of giving you a boy's haircut. I felt the broad tooth comb slid through my hair. Always gently comb your hair. Wet hair stretches and is easily broken. Mom's voice sounded so happy. After sectioning off an area of hair with a narrow comb, she pinned it up and started cutting the back first. Snip, snip, snip. Section by section, she pinned and cut, pinned and cut, pinned and cut. Snip, snip, snip. The little scissors seemed to be alive. Remember how your father said he wanted you looking like a girl? Well, that's what he's going to get. Another darling daughter, you Danielle. And in order to be a pretty girl, you've got to have pretty hair. Wet pieces of hair, some like a couple of inches long, dropped on the sheet. I glanced down over and over to look at them. Don't worry, Danielle. I'm only trimming the ends. After cutting my hair, I combed my hair real well and dried it some more. Mom handed me shoebox full of hair rollers, which were like an inch in diameter. I wanted to say something. I mean, I thought I should say something. But what could I say? The comb touched my scalp and I felt a pulling on my hair. Mom hovered over me as she spoke. Now, dear, I'm combing out a section of hair about an inch deep and half an inch shorter than the roller. Are you listening? Yes? I'm combing the hair straight out up from your scalp, spraying setting lotion on it, and holding it between my finger. Hand me a roller, dear. I gingerly picked up a roller with two fingers and handed it to her over my shoulder. I'm placing the roller next to the strand of hair, rolling it down to your scalp, and using a bobby pin at the base of the roller to hold it in place. The bobby pins slide along my scalp, and I twitched as if a long fingernail had been scratched across a blackboard. I didn't want to react that way, but couldn't help it. Mom spoke in rhythm with her hands, in a voice like the up-and-down movements of a wave, a wave emphasized by the squirt-squirt of the spray bottle and the wetness of the setting lotion on my scalp. Soon your head will be full of rollers. You've been waiting for this, haven't you, sweetheart? God, how the words rolled off her tongue. By now, I was like in a trance. Yes, mother, yes, I blurted out. Smoothly and tautly, she separated a section of hair and wound it around the next roller. Aren't we having fun? I soaked up each minute of my beautification. Section by section, she combed, sprayed, and rolled. Again and again, I felt a tautness against my scalp, followed by brief sharpness, as one roller after was pinned in place. Finishing in front, Mom moved to the side. I can tell you love this, don't you, Danielle? Would my little curler princess like to have his hair in curlers every day? Yes, Mother, I blurted out, no longer trying to hide my feelings. Yes, Mother, oh yes, I answered, the words tumbling out of my mouth before I realized what I was confessing. One by one, the rollers were pinned in place. The sensation was incredible. Almost painful. Wonderfully painful. Danny, would you like me to buy you some pretty rollers like these? They'll be yours, and any time you want, you can set your hair, and not only in your room, but anywhere you want in the house. I mean, don't feel bad about it, she said in almost a giggling little girl's voice. Don't be embarrassed, I'm sure you're not the only little boy who likes pretty hair. What mom was saying was really getting me excited. Danny, do you play with yourself when you pretend to be a girl? I was stunned. Uh, geez, what kind of question is that for a mother to ask her son? Danny, did you hear my question? Yes, mom, I... I heard you. I struggled to get the words out. You know you want to. Isn't that what you were doing the other day when I found you dressed in your sister's undies and bra? Mom was now putting curlers on the other side of my head. Ouch! I cried. Too tight, dear? I shook my head sideways. No. Finally, Mom finished with the top and sides and moved to the back of my head. With each roller, I became more and more excited. Are you sure you don't have any more secrets? Mom whispered in my ear. Nope. 
Have you ever worn your sister's underwear under your jeans? Oh my gosh, I shook my head back and forth. No, but I had to admit to myself that I'd thought about it plenty of times. And do you want to put on your sister's dresses? That was a hard question to answer, so I just gave my head a little shake. No, sure, I went into Sis's closet lots of times to look at her clothes. Sure, I even held a dress or two in front of me and pranced in front of her mirror, swaying from side to side to better see myself. But I never took them off their hanger. It was just make-believe. Now doesn't that make you feel better? Yeah, I panted. All dressed? Yes, I answered, and off came the sheet. I turned around just in time to see my sisters come into the room. Girls, I want you to meet your new sister, Danielle. Danielle? Susan repeated. What kind of a name is Danielle? Now stop that talk. We don't want to confuse your brother, so it's Danielle. From now on, that's what I want you girls calling him, at least when he's... He's like this. I like that name, Mom. My sister Debbie said, it's French, and I like French. Can I have a new French name? Afraid not, dear. Your father will have enough trouble adjusting to Danielle. Ma, that's not fair, Sue whined. He'll have prettier name than me. Okay, you can be Susanelle, my little sister chimed in, and I'll be Debrunel. Girls, please, no more talk about names. Mom sounded exhausted like me. If we all changed our names, you father will think we'd all gone crazy and he'd never come home. Remember, girls, we all have to work together to help your brother be a girl for a while. Understand? The girls looked kind of confused, but liked the idea. I guess Sue mistook my exhausted face for sadness. Don't worry, brother, she said. Being a girl isn't so terrible. Thanks for watching. Check out Patreon if you want to have early access to the other parts. If not, it will be online in a couple of days.